Welcome to Dark Loops Productions, What You Love, a podcast in which I ask people three questions. What you love, how'd you find it, and how do you keep it in your daily life? I'm Dr. Scott Jordan, aka Zombie Scotty, cognitive psychologist, philosopher at Illinois State University. And today I'm joined on the show by Joshua Grant, the author of Another Zombie Apocalypse, which I read, at least volume one, and uh, liked quite a bit. So, Joshua, please tell everybody a little something about who you are and what you do. Okay, well, uh, it's great to be on, by the way. And so, I'm I'm Josh Grant. Uh, uh, I'm I'm a best-selling author and comic creator, and these days, video game designer. I'm working on mm. a video game, which is a uh, uh, a little bit in your your realm. Actually, it's a little mm. bit philosophical. It's Uh-oh. like all about you know, like the the it's about AI, but it's it's a little bit more philosophical than that. But mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, I I do a bit of that. Um, uh, um, but like I said, I'm a comic creator, and that's that's a lot of what I do nowadays. I'm also a YouTube talk show host and interview interesting and famous people from around the world. That's fantastic. So Joshua, question one, what you love? <laughs> I was like, can I narrow it down? <laughs> I'm like a weird passionate person. I swear at any given moment, I get like super fascinated in something, but, uh, but of course, you know, uh, you know, here talking comics, uh, you know, I love, I love writing. I've always loved mm. writing. And, uh, and lately though, it's like, it's been comics all the way years ago. I had this crazy idea for uh, the lost boy, what became the lost boy, which is the, uh, my first comic. And, uh, but I just wanted to tell this story that was like, like a fairy tale, but I wanted to retell it kind of like in this gritty realistic world and, uh, and uh, kind of like Batman. And so, and I, I thought it would be an expensive pet project, but put it out there and, uh, mm. and uh, honestly fell in love with doing comics and uh, have a hard time going back to novels. <laughs> mm, fantastic. So what was, uh, what do you consider to be your most inspirational comic? Ooh. Uh, the uh, one like, that inspired you the most. Me? Yeah. yeah. I was like, you know, I grew up with X-Men and Spider-Man. So I was like, uh, I was all X-Men and Spider-Man all the way, but uh, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And I mm. loved the old, uh, like the Dark Horse Star Wars comics. Mm. And so mm-hmm. uh, I just love like, uh, you know, like what the Clone Wars show is kind of sort of based on. It's like the the comics were amazing. And I just mm. love this this dark, deep story that they told. And just the art was was gorgeous. And so that's that's probably the most inspirational one for me. All right, then. So question number two, how'd you find it? So, you know, I was like, writing was kind of weird. I, I kind of like failed at writing growing up, actually, and uh, mm. struggled with that. But we just had a, I had a teacher in middle school. I actually got a chance to go back and give her my book. She was she was still teaching. And so I got to surprise her with all the kids in the big assembly. It was really fun. But uh, but she she just uh, we had to write these like spooky stories. And uh, and I was I was never super confident back then. And uh, but she's wrote something like, "Ooh, this is scary or something. I don't know. It just like sparked my brain like oh maybe i can write and then we had to do standardized testing when i was like in high school but you were allowed to like read and write and draw when you were done like back then anyway and so uh weirdly standardized testing <laughs> actually like <laughs> helped me uh, become a better writer but uh uh but i wrote for all these years and then uh gave up on it and then uh years ago i, I was on a cruise and just had this like idea for uh, i had a nightmare actually and then i had this idea for a horror book i'm a big scaredy cat but i started with horror mm. for some reason and so mm-hmm. i wrote pandora which is one of my best sellers and uh mm-hmm. and set on a cruise ship and then uh from there i was just writing novels and then uh like i said a few years back i just had this idea of a uh, like retell a fairy tale but in like a gritty realistic way because we can i love how it can tell tell a deep story about humanity and and uh you know i've had a lot of of crazy adventures in life i survived the flash flood i was trapped in the mountains mm. for days and i i got to you know encounter bears and but i i love how you know human beings we can heal each other and grow together and i love to highlight that in my work and so uh uh but i decided to do that through comics surprisingly and it's been it's been a blast every day's christmas when you do comics I'm sorry, I lost I lost your sound. Sorry, your comment, your comment about working on your creativity while other people had something else they wanted you to be doing, right? I remember very <laughs> fondly reading my fantasy novels in high school when I was supposed to be learning speed reading. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey, you were speed reading, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, that's what I told everyone. But this idea that somehow, you know, people's conscious plans for us 
are what we're actually doing, right? And basically, we're we're creating ourselves and doing our own thing. And I always found it a gift to find creativity as something in my life, because it just gave me something to keep doing that wasn't what everybody else wanted me to do, <laughs> right? And I found well, that I, it was- I, I just think that's important. Though. I, I think it's, I, I'm always just amazed how every person has this uh, incredible, innate, like, their own type of creativity and it, mm-hmm. it, it'll come out it, it will come out no matter how much anything else tries to suppress that or bend it, it it'll bend with it but it it's always there i'm i'm blown away i i was a very shy person and i became mm-hmm. an actor i became a stage actor weirdly enough and it got me out of my bubble allows me to do things like right. this of course but mm-hmm. uh i i left that world i became an elementary teacher and now i'm a writer but uh but Weirdly, everything I've done has built towards what I'm doing now. And that's mm-hmm. what I, I was like, I never expected, um, you know, it's like, I used to do costume design for stage stuff. We had to do that. And, uh, mm. and I used to design sets. And nowadays I'm actually using those skills big time with comics. I don't do the final art for my comics, but mm. I do all the, like the concept art and the layout and, uh, mm-hmm. and the script writing. And it's definitely, definitely relevant for, for my theater skills. <laughs> Yeah. Earlier when you were talking about writing a fairy tale and and sort of adding to it or reformulating it, you know, I noticed that in uh, another zombie apocalypse, apocalypse, each of those stories is a sort of reformulation to Mm -hmm. some extent. Um, I have to admit, I enjoyed them all. And I'm particularly fond of the first one where you uh, you challenge Asimov's three laws of robotics in a way that would become relevant to a computer or a robot during the zombie apocalypse. So <clears throat> well done on that. And thank you. Uh, yeah. Just, I, I, I just had, I had loads of fun with, uh, uh, you know, it's like after doing the lost boy and the lost boy was actually kind of my, uh, I'm running out of ideas. So I wanted to like use, use some sort of source material. So I was like, what's a fairy tale I can use. And so I was like, I went, and so I retold the Peter Pan story. So I was like, I have to be true to Peter Pan, but do it in a different way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and had a lot of fun. I did the same thing. Like you said, with, um, zombie, each story, Mm -hmm. I, it was my thought experiment of like, can I take a piece of the zombie apocalypse, the zombie trope that's kind of been done to death, you know, Mm -hmm. I guess, but it's like, and how can I re shape that and um and of course the robot i loved i don't know that was the when my brain gets stuck in an idea i'm like that's what i have to write and that's definitely the one i was like uh you know it's like it'd be fascinating with where we're at as a society we are already getting robots out there in the world so mm. there are going to be a part of the zombie apocalypse so what would a robot be feeling or thinking about during mm-hmm. the zombie apocalypse and would it see zombies as different than humans because they really are still human they're just sick in a zombie no, that's fantastic that's fantastic so third question how do you keep it in your daily life yeah you know that's the that's the tough these days you know i i have a uh, it's become my focus. So it's like, uh, it's a little bit easier. Uh, but I was teaching when I first was writing. And so I was an elementary teacher and, uh, and teaching is one of those things is like, you know, acting was something that took up my all. And then I, I, I was successful at that. And just, uh, I had a night where I needed something different, less me focused, more people focused. So I left that. And, um, and I, I became a teacher of all things. I never thought I'd be working with kids. And I love working with kids. I still work with kids. I'm a director at a summer camp in the summer, but, uh, but it's like, I, I like, while I was teaching though, I was like, I was like, you know, you just don't have time. You got to focus entirely on working in your class mm-hmm. or, or otherwise. And so I, I, I took the leap and was like, you know, I'm just going to, leave teaching. I've, I've got enough money built up for now. And, uh, and that I was like, I can leave that. I can come back to it if I need to and, uh, and uh, go full on into writing. And, and of course you get your book out there and, and you're like, Oh my goodness, I, 7 million people are going to buy it. And then I sold like six books in like my first year. It was like the most uh, dismal right. thing. So yeah. you gotta like stick with it, of course. Uh, and I'm, yeah. that's why I'm always telling people it. Uh, but I don't know. I was surprised when I um, published I never wanted to be an indie publisher. Uh, I, I wanted to be a traditional publisher, but I ended up becoming an indie author and, uh, and setting up my own business. And when it became mine, I never wanted to be a businessman, but I, I fell in love with that. And like having all this, and I built a whole community on uh, diabolic shrimp, which is my website. And so we got like 5,000 people across that from all over the mm-hmm. place. And, uh, and it's like, it's just really fun when you, mm-hmm. when you build it yourself. So it's like, it becomes really natural to keep it in your life. You know, it's like, because, uh, I mean, it really does take a lot of work, especially like 
the parts of it, like marketing and things is it takes a lot of time and it's really challenging, but, but it's weirdly like even the work pieces started becoming fun because it was mine. It was, it was meaningful to me and it was something like important. And so I just find, I don't know, I have a, uh, I have ADD and, uh, and all the things I do, I'm doing like several projects at once and it kind of works for me, it, like works yeah. for me to be like, as soon as I'm kind of like done with this one in my brain, I just can jump to that one and jump to that one. So it's kind of this constant rotating wheel every day is kind of what I do, but uh, but it keeps me interested, I guess. I don't know. Well, in my work, I call it keeping irons in the fire. And then what you learn to do over time is you learn when it's time to take one out and focus on it, finish it. I call it going end game on it. The uh, others will be fine while you're working and finalizing that one. And that's that's the only way you keep going. You've got to have things in the fire. Uh, so I, I, I think there. I put them all in there, and then they all just melt. Is that what <laughs> I, is? I don't. I don't ever take them out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So um, I did want to dabble in this idea of AI for a, a minute. And I want to connect oh, it to something you mentioned earlier about you know taking a fairy tale and revamping it because one of the things we often creators are probably more aware of it than non-creators but Mm -hmm. um we're it's not like we're telling absolutely new stories what we're doing is taking stories and reorganizing them retelling them in our time and how did we learn them we learned them by listening to them by embodying the algorithms and the stories yeah and so when I get involved in the AI argument, particularly with creators who are really upset that they might be replaced, yeah, I try to make the case, but that's exactly what we are. So I, I'm wondering what would be your thoughts on on a discussion like that? You know, I was actually just talking about this the other night. It's it's fascinating because uh, uh, I've been I've been so shocked lately about the uh, you know how AI has really been thrust into the forefront because weirdly uh, I guess I've been ahead of the game on some of that when it comes mm. to uh, uh, like I, I uh, uh, you know, I'm working on a video game and my video game is all about artificial intelligence gone awry. And mm. so it's kind of like a Terminator future, but you play as ego, which is an AI, but there's also like super ego and there's id. <laughs> and so they're like, they're two different AIs that are warring with each other and uh, yeah. humanity stuck in the middle. So you play as the third AI that gets awakened to, to deal with that. And it's all about brain science to every area is kind of modeled after a part of the brain. And, uh, and it's just a kind of an old school, like Metroid game, but like we thought it'd be fun since it was AI gone awry to actually use some AI and like, creating it so we're using it for some of the concept art and stuff and then we take that and we we draw and we do do our own thing but uh but so we were using like dolly too back before anyone had even really mm. knew about like as much about like chat g it, it was before chat gpt was out and all the right. ai kind of went mainstream but but like you were saying i was like I, I i mean i think it's fun to use ai and i think it's i think it's important that people start paying attention to that and start utilizing it and i think honestly it's going to be a wonderful enabling tool for people just like when ebooks became a thing mm. it's like everyone the traditional publishers were really upset about that but then it kind of allowed more people to actually enter into that and i think ai is going to do a lot of that for a lot of things and it was like you were saying i, I was like i get a little bit actually uh, a bit annoyed honestly when uh like you said creators are like you know, it's going to put me out of a job. I was like, I don't, I don't necessarily think that's the case. I do. I can understand being a little bit upset if, if, if it, you know, it seems like your work, but like you said, we as human beings, if you really look at it, do the exact same thing. We saw something I'm all my books are inspired by something, you know, it's like mm-hmm. we saw different things and your brain is naturally just like combining these things in this putty. And then you kind of build out of that. And I think AI is doing it as well it's just uh uh it's it's just gonna be a challenge when it comes to like there's already kind of a flood of stuff out there and now we're gonna get this like massive flood of of art and books and things and so so it'll be i don't know i'm 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 excited for i'm an optimist i think uh i i believe that we can have a star wars future and not a terminator future and so uh so i i believe it's gonna i i believe it's going to be a, a ultimately a good thing for humanity especially on things like medical development and things like that and, oh, yeah. uh, and but in the creative space i think it could be very useful and helpful for for people that are that are creators as well it's it's here You're yeah and it's it? it's not going to go away to be honest no, i was like exactly. and this is the worst it's going to be 
So it's only going to get better. And it's just, I don't know, I've been blown away. Like years ago, I wrote Nexus, which is all about philosophy around robotics and uh, Mm. humanity and why are we important as humans. And I listened to actually one of the lead developers of like robotics talking at the time. He was talking about how he, he was like, robots are going to replace us and that's a good thing which actually disturbed me on a fundamental right, level right, but, right. but uh, he was building a robot god is what he was building but like but uh <laughs> it was kind of scaring me so i was like but that like made me write nexus and i was like why are humans important but through that i really gained an appreciation i think for um for ai and machines as well yeah. and that's what nexus is all about that's it's, it's a very philosophical book but it's also kind of terminator <laughs> oh well that's fantastic star wars versus terminator um my generation, it would be uh, Star uh, Star Trek versus Terminator. Oh, I love but... <laughs> well Star Trek, especially too. I was like, oh, I love Star Trek. I was like, uh, that's that's actually what worries me. Where they were like, how can we, uh, you know, stop AI from, you know, supplanting us or whatever? And uh, and you know, like, uh, you know, I, the guy's crazy, but uh, but one of his good ideas, uh, Elon Musk talking about like putting AI into our brain. He's like, he's like, that's the best solution is to put it in there. So we basically hijack AI. So we grow together, but I'm like, so essentially the Borg, it's our best option. Yeah, and I was like, we are Borg, the, man. which the worst part is I was like, I can't exactly think of necessarily a better option right now, but at the same time, uh, I was like, that doesn't sound great to me. <laughs> there you go. So, Hey, Josh, it was fantastic to chat with you. Why don't you tell everyone where they can find you on social media? Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, and thank you so much for having me too. And uh, well, uh, for for me, uh, best place you can always find me is diabolicshrimp.com, which is my website. It's it's part of my diabolic plan to take over the world and and put <laughs> shrimp in space is our main goal is to send shrimp to space. And so, uh, yeah. but we have we have a great community on there of both readers and authors. So if you're an author or a creator or uh, or uh, even podcasts and things, I love connecting people. And so and it's free to join, and I I give authors reviews, and it's all free. And so uh, so diabolicshrimp.com is a great place you can keep up with and find all my works all my books are on amazon if you want to support that every uh, portion of each one goes to universally good things so childhood mm. disease research ocean exploration we planted 14 trees the, the oh, other year fantastic. and so it's fun and then uh uh yeah and diabolic shrimp is the name of my instagram and then also um uh my youtube uh, i have a youtube talk show and interview interesting people hopefully i can get you on the show at, at some point here and so uh, yeah. we're winding down our season right now but like maybe next season here so love to talk philosophy of ai oh um, yeah yeah absolutely and what it means to be human favorite topics of mine um so everyone out there you can find all episodes of what you love on youtube at the dark loops productions channel you can also find them wherever fine podcasts are available. Uh, Josh, again, it was great to chat with you. Thank you so much for joining the show today. And uh, we'll see you when we see you. Thank you. Bye-bye.